Hey guys, I'm back again and I'm here to do a book haul. Okay, so I haven't done one of those since maybe two months or three months, I can't remember. And so I have acquired quite a lot of books since the last book haul. Now, some of them I acquired, I would say the month of August, mostly, July and August. And then I went to the Festival of America, which was this past weekend, uh, the weekend of the 23rd, the 24th, 25th in, in Vincennes, uh, which is south of Paris. So I went for that one and I acquired more. So this one is just going to be of the books I acquired before the Festival of America. So we're going to just try to make this quick and sweet. I don't want to be too long. Okay. The first book I picked up was this one, which is called Night Crawling by Layla Motley. So this book, of course, you've seen it everywhere. And this book was, was long listed for the Booker Prize. Layla Motley is a debut author. So I'm very much looking forward to reading this one. So I think this one is going to wind up on my October list. I'm not sure, but I'm going to try to make it October. So what is this one about? Actually, this is the story uh, that is based off of a real event, which I was not aware of. I don't think I've heard anyone say that. I'm not sure. But I have been avoiding a lot of uh, reviews on this book because I want to read it and get my own perspective on it. But this book, yeah, was based off of a real life uh, true crime event. Uh, having to do with police officers in somewhere in California. I don't know if it's San Diego. I can't remember. And uh, young girls uh, getting them into prostitution. It was like trafficking kind of situation with police. So Layla Motley is a young writer. She was only 19, I think, when she first wrote this book. And I think she's actually 21 or something like that. She's quite young. But a very interesting person. I got a chance to speak with her at the Festival America. So this book is everywhere. This edition that I'm holding here is a UK edition that comes from Waterstones, I think. And it has these really cool uh, kind of these painted edges. It's black, black, and then there's this thing there. So Night Crawling. I don't need to read the cover. I think you've heard a lot about this one. Okay, the next book on my list is Excellent Women by Barbara Pym. This is the Virago Modern Classics Edition. And I have never read anything by Barbara Pym. <laughs> so <clears throat> my friend Victoria was talking to me about Barbara Pym. And I said, I don't know who she is. Uh, let me check her out. So when I was on holiday, I picked up this edition in Strasbourg and I really really love this edition. So what is this book about? It says Mildred Latherberry is one of those excellent women who are often taken for granted. She's a godsend capable of dealing with most of the stock situations or even the great moments of life, birth, marriage, death, the successful jumble sale, the garden fet spoilt by bad weather. Her glamorous new neighbors, the Napiers, seem to be facing a marital crisis. One cannot take sides in these matters, though it is a tricky, especially as Mildred has a soft spot for dashing young Rockingham Napier. This is Barbara Pym's world at its funniest and most touching. So yeah, I'm kind of really interested in, in you know, checking this one out. This feels like something I want to read like around Christmas time. I'm not really sure why I said that. This is this book was published in 1952. Feels like something I want to read around Christmas time for some reason. But yeah, if you've read uh, Excellent Women, let me know what you thought about it and try to get me to read it at least by December. Okay, the next book on the list is Blue and that by Emily Poffet. And Emily Poffet is a Haitian writer. Here she is right here. Emily Poffet. And this is one that's been on my list for a long time. <clears throat> and I decided to pick this one up. It says on the inner cover here, this is a translation from French. 
So it says, airports are distillations of the world. I like thinking of them that way. The hope of leaving and the desire to come home existing side by side. Any voyage is possible. My mind flies off toward the blue province once again. I don't know any more why I always associate it with blue. It isn't even my favorite color. So that's just like a little passage. And I feel like that is a very uh, enticing uh, entrance into this book. Reading that on the side cover without actually reading uh, the, you know, a little bit of the summary. I didn't read the summary. I just read one little passage that was at the top here uh, talking about like a passage from the book. And I think that is very intriguing, at least it was to me. Okay, the next book on my list is The Furrows by uh, Namwali Serpel. And Namwali Serpel wrote The Old Drift, which we read a few summers ago for the Read So Lit Summer Read Along. And this is her second book, which is called The Furrows. I have no idea what this book is about. I don't really care what it's about. I loved uh, The Old Drift so much. I was like, I just don't care. I'm picking up the book, supporting this author, and we'll just see what this book is about later. But just to give you an idea, it says Cassandra Williams is 12. Her little brother Wayne is seven. One day when they're alone together, there is an accident and Wayne is lost forever. Though his body is never recovered, their mother can't stop searching. The missing boy cleaves the family with doubt. How do you grieve an absence and how does it feel? Okay, that's all I'm going to read. Stunning cover. Uh, just, I'm all here for this one. I can't wait to get to it. Okay, the next, next books I'm going to talk about, and I'm just going to briefly mention them. So I picked up Nana, which is book nine in the Hugo Macau series, which I'm currently reading right now and then I have I think it's in this order Pobuyu which is the next one Obonel de Dame which is the next one and La Joie de Vivre okay so these will finish off the first half of the Hugo Macau series Oh, I'm ecstatic. I'm enjoying the hell out of Nana and it's book number nine and it's hard to believe that we're already September and the year is really, really finishing quickly. Okay, the next book I have on my list is this one which is called Wake, The Hidden History of Women-Led Slave Revolts by Rebecca Hall. Now this was gifted to me by the publishers and I I wasn't really keen on reading this one because I wasn't really a fan of the artwork from what I could see. And now that I have it in front of me, I'm still not a fan of the artwork. Mm -mm, not the best artwork. But this being said, after having read the um, Book of Night Women, this got me into wanting to read this one. So I was kind of happy that the publishers offered to send me this, this particular uh, book. And so this can complete this idea of reading about women-led slave revolts. So this one I'm definitely going to get to at some point. It won't be this month, but it'll surely be next month. So that's Wake. Uh, just so you can get an idea of the, the artwork and why I'm not a fan of it. Okay, so you see it looks like this. Uh, I, I don't really appreciate uh, how the faces have been drawn in this, this particular graphic novel. I just feel like they could have been drawn so much better and given a lot of depth to the characters and the events that are taking place. So for the artwork, it's like it's a no ma'am, but I'm sure the story itself is going to be good. I can't wait to get into it. Okay, the next book I have on my list is Trust by Hernan Diaz. Okay, I picked this one up as well in Strasbourg when I was on holiday. And I did finish reading this one. And I'm going to have to say this is really not my cup of tea. I read it. I can see the idea of the plot of what's going on, but it just did not move me at all. I, I mean, I don't know. I just felt really detached from this book. 
Uh, I see why people really like it, but I personally felt it um, a little bit on the dry side and just a little bit like disconnected. I need to be connected when I'm reading uh, to really, really enjoy. And I just didn't get that with this. I just didn't. The next book on my list is Sea of Tranquility by em Emily St. John Mandel. Now, this one right here, I would never have picked up. But this is my book club in Normandy chose this one for the list for this coming school year. So 2022-2023. So I saw it in Strasbourg and I picked it up. This is apparently, which I didn't realize, connected to Station Eleven and The Glass Hotel. Now I have read The Glass Hotel and I did quite like The Glass Hotel. I think I gave it like three and a half. I quite enjoyed it. So this is Sea and Tranquility and it says in 1912, 18-year-old Edwin St. Andrew crosses the Atlantic, exiled from English polite society in British Columbia. He enters the forest spellbound by the beauty of the Canadian wilderness. And for a split second, all is, is darkness, the notes of a violin echoing unnaturally through the air. The experience shocks him to his core. Two centuries later, Olive Llewellyn a famous writer is traveling all over Earth, far away from her home in the second moon colony. Within the text of Olive's best-selling novel lies a strange passage. A man plays his violin for change in the echoing corridor of an airship terminal as the trees of a forest rise around him. Okay, so I'm just going to stop there. Uh, you can see that there's a connection with Station Eleven. The Glass Hotel, I'm not sure what the connection is. But, so this is what we're going to be reading. It's, a, it's like a sci-fi kind of situation. Not really my cup of tea, so I don't really know. I, I'm thinking, I'm going to be positive. I'm thinking I'm going to like it. I don't know. Okay, next on my list, I have Glory by No Violet Bulawayo. Okay, so I picked this up in Strasbourg as well. This is a book that I've been waiting for for a while now, which is the second book from No Violet Bulawayo. Her first book was We Need New Names, which I did enjoy. I gave it about three stars. I enjoyed the first half more than the second half. I think you can look, uh, if I can find it, I'll link the, the review that I did of We Need New Names. So this is Glory, which people are liking to... Animal Farm by George Orwell because it has animals, you know, with human-like characteristics. And so, but the difference with this is it's discussing uh, the intricacies of society and politics in Zimbabwe. So I am all in. The last book that I read that dealt with uh, Zimbabwe was A House of Stone, which is excellent if you haven't read that. Uh, that's a book that she should definitely pick up. Uh, maybe it's an accompaniment to this one, even though I haven't read that yet, read this one yet. I feel like they could accompany each other somehow. So glory. And last but not least, I picked up the bird catcher by Gail Jones. This is Gail Jones's newest release. She released, I think it was last year, Palmeris which I did purchase and I still have not read because I'm scared to read it. I've heard so many bad critique about it. So I'm kind of trying to like let that slide before I kind of actually really do go and pick it up. But I feel like the bird catcher is going to be a lot more interesting and much more like the writing, the beginning writings of Gail Jones of what I know of her, which is Corridora, Eva's Man, that kind of thing. So it's a short little ditty. It's not very long at all. Um, yeah, it's somewhere just a little bit over 200 pages. And I'm really, really looking forward to reading this one as soon as I possibly can. I'm just so ecstatic. Gail Jones. So that's all I have for you today. I hope uh, you enjoyed this. Let's chat below if there's anything that you want to encourage me to put forward on my DBR list. Comment below and let me know or anything you didn't like. Comment and let, let me know below about that too. All right. I'll see you again real soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>